Studios, covering Yuma and the Imperial Valley. This is KYMA News 11. Welcome back everyone. Now it's time for some News 11's entertainment. If you're planning on seeing a movie this weekend for Easter, our very own Andy Canchola reviewed the blockbuster for the weekend, Batman vs. Superman, and he's standing by in the studio. Hey Andy. Thank you. Finally, the day comic book lovers have been waiting for. Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice was released today in theaters everywhere. Son of Krypton versus Bat of Gotham. Henry Cavill is back as Superman, and this time around they introduced Ben Affleck as Batman and Gail Gadot as Wonder Woman. After the devastation in Metropolis in Man of Steel, Batman doesn't believe one man should have the power to destroy the whole world, and that's where the conflict begins. This movie had major pacing issues. I felt that it was moving slow in the beginning, but it was just because they have to get everything ready for the future movies, and it is the first of many. Stay down! If I wanted it, you'd be dead already. Ben Affleck did an amazing job as Batman, and I can't wait to see him continue as a role to see what he can do. The final fight between Batman and Superman is awesome, and they legitimately want to hurt each other. For comic book fans, they use a lot of different storylines in one movie, and I feel like that's going to be the problem with people watching this film. Although this movie was slow in the beginning, it starts picking up and becomes a huge action-packed film. That's why I'm giving this movie a three and a half out of five Andes. I'd love to hear about what you thought about this movie on our Facebook page. And as always, I'm Andy Canchola, back to you at the desk. Thank you, Andy. Well, I definitely had a chance to see it this weekend, but I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Um, it's it's, uh, let's see, I'd probably give it four Andes, four, four and a half Andes. All right, well, just days after President Obama's trip to Cuba, rock legends the Rolling Stones played an open-air concert in Havana where they drew hundreds of thousands of fans. Rock and roll history is made in Cuba as the United States renews relations there, and the Rolling Stones performed a free show in Havana Friday. Mick Jagger strutted across the stage, starting off the night with the band's classic Jumpin' Jack Flash. The British rockers are the first major international band to play there since the Cuban Revolution almost 60 years now. And Adele has apologized after a fan was injured at one of her concerts in Scotland. The incident happened Friday night at the In Glasgow when a chain fell from production rigging and hit a woman in the audience. The fan was treated at the scene and hospitalized as a caution and Adele tweeted I'm so sorry to hear that someone got hurt at my show tonight it's been in, it's being investigated to ensure it won't happen again well that's going to wrap up this round of News 11's entertainment coming up after the break in the past they say they've made a horse bison and polar bear this year their snow sculpture is just in time for Easter that's nice Coming up on Nightside, eggs were dropped off for hundreds of kids by a special kind of Easter bunny today. That's next. And a local bully rehab gym helps raise funds for their wrestling academy. Coming up, we'll tell you how much money they brought in. Plus, a man wanted on felony charges for a hit and run led police on a chaotic chase this week. That's tonight on Nightside, which begins right now. Live from the KYMA studios, covering Yuma and the Imperial Valley, this is Nightside on KYMA News 11. Thank you for joining us on Nightside. I'm Molly Lang. In Arizona, a man wanted on felony charges for a hit and run led police on a chaotic chase this week. He jumped out of his truck at a stoplight in Mesa and then tried to carjack an Army veteran on a motorcycle. Kim Tobin takes us there. Kind of surreal. I just couldn't believe that was me. So I see myself tussle back for a second, and I go back at him, and it was just it was just weird to see myself moving and acting like that. Brandon Jenkins is the one behind the helmet who headbutts the crook trying to swipe his bike. Extremely bizarre. I've never thought I'd be in the limelight for anything. Fell over, rashed up, cracked right here. And now he's checking out the damage done to his GSX 600. And uh, it's kind of been my baby. It's just all beat up. The whole side plastics are just nothing really. Nothing really didn't get damaged. Jenkins was just a few stoplights away from his house when the man police were chasing, Josh Monogold, tried to fight him for his bike. Yeah, I'm a small dude, but I'm pretty feisty. Yeah, then it was go time. Then it was, uh, 
you're trying to take my bike and that's not gonna happen. Jenkins was ready to fight because he already fought for that bike. His big purchase, once his time in the Army and a tour in Afghanistan, came to an end. It was kind of the last piece of my deployment that I had left that I, I spent my money on. Although it's tough for him to see his motorcycle in this state, Jenkins says, in a weird way, he's glad he was the one targeted. If it was anybody else, who knows, they could have gotten hurt. So I, I'm kind of... I'm kind of glad it happened to me because I'm okay. And this week's attacks have heightened concerns about Europeans and others who became radicalized by ISIS in Syria and then returned with deadly intentions. U.S. officials say that over the past few years, more than 20,000 foreign fighters have poured into Syria, at least 3,400 of them from Western countries like Belgium. As NBC's Keir Simmons reports, some never make it back. More relatives have arrived in Belgium to comfort the Americans who were seriously injured in the attacks. And now we're learning more about a group of Mormon missionaries from Utah who survived those attacks. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has their stories tonight. Well, happy Saturday night to all of you. It has been such a beautiful day today, and I know I've enjoyed it. So hopefully you've had a chance to step outside and enjoy those beautiful temperatures that we've been having. Let's take a look outside at our Skycam view. Uh, Fourth Avenue on this Saturday night. Thank you, Yuma Rehabilitation Hospital, for that view. We're going to go on to our radar and satellite. Not a whole lot happening for us currently, and our current temperatures right now, it looks like uh, Blythe is 71 degrees. 73 in Imperial, 66 in El Centro, 74 in Yuma, and 71 out at YPG. And moving on now to our headlines for tonight. It's going to be a mild, clear evening for us, um, and tomorrow, beautiful sunny day for Easter. Down the road, a bit windy, but we'll have more for you in our full weather forecast. Well, the Bully Rehab Awareness Gym Fill the Boot Drive was all day today at Harkins Theaters at the Yuma Palms Mall. Bragg Inc.'s mission is to empower victims of dominance behavior to be resilient and respectful through the art of the gentle way. And the Quashon Tribal Police Department as well as Winter Haven Fire Department were there to help raise money for a great cause. All the proceeds will benefit the Bragg Wrestling Academy. They are in need of a wrestling mat for their wrestlers. And we spoke to their coach today who says they don't have a mat to practice on, which makes it very difficult. And we want the kids to get used to wrestling on an actual wrestling mat in order for them to actually do a lot better uh, when we do decide to take them to, to out of state or different cities for actual tournaments. What we do is teach them about being bullied or you know, if they've seen something to actually speak out about it. Uh, we're not there to have anyone be bullied, especially in the mat. We encourage everyone to shake hands, to support one another as a family and as a big team. And I caught up with Kenrick Escalante today, and he said that they raised over $1,300 today at their drive. So thank you to everyone who came out and supported them. And if you weren't able to make their event, you can drop off a donation at their gym at 3242 East 43rd Street in Yuma. Also, their website is braginkyuma.org. Well, it was an exciting day for lots of kids. They got to participate in the largest Easter egg hunt in the Bay Area. Look at them go. It was a fun time for the kids rushing to grab the eggs with chocolate inside. But perhaps the best part was before the hunt started, the eggs were hurled on the ground from a helicopter. It's pretty exciting stuff. Well, coming up after the break, there is an event that happened today. It's an event that is open for everyone. Special uh, before Easter celebration and about 40 bike riders from various points of Southern California and south of the border joined in today to raise money for a local cause. We'll tell you what cause that is right after the break. Well, a journey that started on the battlefields of Afghanistan, a wound left young Rocky so injured, few thought he'd ever walk, much less run again. This morning, Rocky has finally made his way back home to Washington, D.C. NBC's Carrie Sanders has the story. Rocky, U.S. Army combat veteran. To see him today, you'd be hard pressed to know a roadside bomb left him lame. You may remember this viral photo, Rocky sitting on the bed with his partner, Army Specialist Andrew Brown. The two initially recovering together at a U.S. military hospital in Germany. And yes, that's a purple heart on Rocky's collar. That's what we want. Like any other member of the U.S. military, rehabilitating Rocky's back left leg, his femur shattered in pieces, became a mission. It's an extremely painful injury. He had a lot of skin missing and uh, burn injury from the blast itself. Sit. 
good. Seven weeks into his recovery and progress. He's a great temperament, which makes it easy to be doing these exercises and having him here. Three and a half months from the day that bomb exploded, Rocky is quick, alert, strong. <laughs> Finally, a day of celebration, leaving behind those who had taken Rocky so far. A veteran, now homeward bound. Back on U.S. soil at Walter Reed Hospital near the nation's capital, a reunion. That moment when a long deployed soldier finally sees family again. He saw me, he was like, oh, there's, there's my dad. <laughs> Specialist Andrew Brown himself still going through physical therapy. And whether Rocky returns to work or not, one thing is for certain, he will return to Specialist Brown's care. The two bonded in service, bonded for life. Feels really good to see him pretty much back to normal for the most part. Rocky is still active duty, so later this weekend he will report to Fort Hood in Texas. The brass there will decide if he's going to remain on active duty or if Rocky will retire. Specialist Brown says if Rocky retires, his family will all, him and his family will always have a home. Well, coming up after the break, the latest Hollywood blockbuster, Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, is in theaters this weekend. And coming up after the break, we'll tell you who to keep your eyes out for from the longest serving member of the U.S. Senate. Also coming up in your weather forecast, are these beautiful temperatures here to stay? Well, that's next. Welcome back everyone. Well, a couple in Minnesota channeled their inner snow bunny. Bailey and Drew Trogstad Isaacson took advantage of the fresh snow and built a snow bunny sculpture in their front yard. And of course, it's just in time for the Easter weekend. They named it Rumonia after their live pet rabbit, Rue. And the couple, sa couple says they like to be active and creative during the cold weather. Very good plan. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Join us tomorrow for the early edition and night side. See you then down a little bit on Wednesday and Thursday, ending out your week in the 80s. All right, well, experts say that pandas don't usually take baths in the wild, but a 264-pound giant panda jumped in a tub this last week and took a bubble bath. That is pretty sweet. He can barely fit in the tub, um, but he definitely wanted to cool down, as you can see. And this is at the Smithsonian's National Zoo, and um, that is just pretty adorable. He appeared to enjoy splashing around and rubbing the soap in his ears and his keepers say that the bubble bath was a non-toxic foaming soap and the big panda had such a good time he wiggled his tail. Oh, that's pretty cute. This is more than you see when you go to a normal zoo. They're all sleeping. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us. Join us tonight for Nightside. We'll see you then.